So in my last table tutorial, I overlooked how to handle row selection. So I'm going to cover that in uh, this tutorial. So there's two ways to handle row selection in WatchKit. So I'm going to cover the first way. The first way is a function. Table, as you can see, you start writing table, did select row at index. So this function gives you the index path of the row that you selected as row index. You run this app and as you can see we're given the index number of the row that was clicked. The other way to uh, handle row selections is segueing the row to another interface controller. Now this is probably the more useful way. So if we pull another interface controller into the screen, uh, add a label to it, create an interface controller class for this, So this uses, um, so we just create a segue between these two, didn't want to do, oh, that's good enough. So this function uses something called contexts. Now this is um, unique to, I think it's unique to extensions in iOS and iOS 8. And it lets you pass an object, of course, between interface controllers in this case. So if we start writing context, we can see context for segue with identifier and in table. This runs, this function runs if you're selecting a, if you run a segue from a table select. So if we just run that, this function has the requirement of returning something. Returning, well it can be anything, but in this case we're going to return the text value for that particular row. So if we get the object, and we select the index, the objects for a particular index path, index. This will, of course, return to the context of this second view controller that piece of text. So, of course, now we need to handle that piece of text. So, we're just going to link that text field. And so, as you can see, here has a context, a wake with context. That context value is the context that we sent from our last interface controller. So if we set that text outlet, text outlet dot set text, and we go context as string, because it needs it to be of a particular type. I'm gonna add a question mark in there, I'm guessing. Yes. This will set that text with the context value, which of course is the string we declared a second ago, run our app. So something the first, as you can see, that piece of text is sent through that context into that text field. So that covers how to handle row selection. It also shows you how to use the context. Of course, you can use the context with segue if identifier without that in line to handle, say, a button press or any other way that you need to send data between 